Assalamu alaikum students welcome to this new video and remember in the previous video we were doing alternative representations of normal form game and dynamic games and the plan for today's video is that we will be uh, talking about the illustrations of the dynamic game and we will be doing uh, stackelberg model of duopoly which is uh, which we can solve by this uh, subgame perfect nash equilibrium and then i will show you a case study of walmart dynamic game so we are going to study stackelberg model of duopoly but let me very briefly explain you how it is different from coordinate model so first i will explain you the coordinate model and then i will tell you how it is different from the stackelberg so remember that in coordinate model we have two firms those are the players and then the strategies of the firms are that they have to choose the level of outputs and then the payoff for each firm is the profit uh, to each firm pi 1 means the profit of firm number 1 and pi 2 means the profit of firm number 2 and then how do we find the equilibrium if you remember we have to find the nash equilibrium in this case and how do we find nash equilibrium we maximize the profit number pi 1 and pi 2 simultaneously okay so this is very very important that in order to solve the coordinate coordinate game we maximize pi 1 and pi 2 simultaneously okay So let me now explain you the difference between the Stackelberg model and the Cornett model, and you will notice that the Stackelberg model looks better than the Cornett model. So the first thing is that the Stackelberg model of duopoly is asymmetric, which means that uh, you know the two firms are not necessarily have to be the same one. form can be bigger and the other form can be smaller or <clears throat> one form can be leader the other form can be a follower but if you remember in cornett model we assume that two forms are identical they are they are same okay and then we have uh, two forms again just like cornett model and the action and strategies are they have to choose the quantities and it is also same like what we have in the cornett model but this is the difference that in stackelberg model we have the timing which means that from number 1 chooses its quantity and then after that from number 2 observes the quantity of from number 1 and then he decides to choose uh, the quantity which is best after looking at the quantity of from number one so there is timing involved so if you remember in the <coughs> cornett model there is no timing firms are choosing the output simultaneously at the same time and then finally each firm gets payoff which is in terms of profits and uh, these functions are same as we have in the case of cornett model but here we need to solve the game by using sub game perfect nash equilibrium why because there is timing involved and if you remember in case of uh, cornett model we have to find the nash equilibrium because firms were choosing their quantities simultaneously so in uh, stackelberg model the leader actually moves first the leader means that the firm is bigger or maybe it has a market power so it moves first and then the followers will move at the second place and these followers can be small firms or they have less power and then once uh, both firms take their decision we find the equilibrium prices and quantities in the in, with the help of dynamic games and the example of these this model could be the could be opec Uh, is the leader in the oil price market they choose their quantities first and then the other small uh, you know countries or small firms choose their quantities after they look at how opec decided about their quantity and then there is a, a you know first mover advantage which means that the firm who moves first uh, will be getting higher outputs and they will be getting more prof 
benefits and I will explain this to you in a moment. So now we can take an example of the Stackelberg duopoly model and we assume that there are two firms, firm number one and firm number two and they face an industry demand function which is represented by P is equal to 150 minus Q. So this is the demand function of the uh, whole industry where there are only two firms. And then this quantity is actually Q1 plus Q2. Q1 is the output of firm number one. Q2 is the output of firm number two. And this is the total industry output. And both firms have the same unit cost of production. Like we say that their cost of production is same and the per unit cost is 30. And then what is the timing of the game? That from one uh, moves first and then he chooses quantity Q1. And in the second stage after observing Q1, form number two moves and chooses its quantity Q2. So let us now find the solution for Stackelberg model of duopoly. And remember that the form number one is moving first, but we have to solve this game using backward induction method, which means that we first have to find the best response of form number two, and then we go back to form number one and solve his, uh, you know, maximization problem. So, so first we have to derive form number two's best response in the second stage. So we start from the end. So given the quantity chosen by form number one, which is Q1, like this is fixed quantity for form number, uh, from form number one, and then what form number two they chooses, form number two chooses Q2 to maximize his uh, profit. Okay, so form number two takes the quantity of form number one as given and then it maximizes its profit. So remember the profit is uh, total revenue minus total cost and total revenue is actually price multiplied by quantity and total cost is the um, per unit cost multiplied by uh, quantity. So if you remember from the previous slide, price is equal to 150 minus Q and then Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. We can substitute this price in this equation for total revenue and also we put Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. And then what is this uh, cost C? This C is assumed to be equal to 30 as we I showed you in the previous slide. So now if we put these in, into the profit function, we see that profit will be equal to 150 minus Q1 minus Q2. It is coming from here. And then we multiply it by Q2 minus 30 times Q2. So this is the profit function of form number um, two. So now we have to maximize this function. And I think there is a mistake here. It should be pi two because we are solving the uh, maximization problem for form number two. So anyhow, how do we solve this uh, profit function? How do we maximize it? We have to apply the first order condition, which means we have to take the derivative of this function with respect to Q2 and we have to put it equal to zero. So the first order condition, we take the derivative with respect to Q2. So if we take the derivative of this equation, it becomes 150 minus 2Q2 minus Q1 minus 30 is equal to zero. So now if we solve it for Q2, so Q2 is depending upon Q1 and it is equal to 60 minus Q1 divided by Q2. So this is the uh, you know best quantity for form number two given the quantity of form number one. So we have solved the game for form number two because we are doing backward induction. So now we can move back to form number one and we solve his optimal choice Q1. So remember this is a game of perfect information which means that form number one knows the profit function of form number two and he know 
that how form number two is going to maximize and what is his best quantity. So after he observes the quantity of form number two, and then he chooses its own quantity Q1. So form number one chooses Q1 to maximize his profit function. And remember that he knows the quantity of form number two because we are doing backward induction and form number one knows the, uh, the uh, optimal solution of form number two. So form number one now maximizes its profit given the quantity of form number two. Okay. So we solve the maximization problem of form number one given in this function. This is the profit function of form number one. And you know, if we substitute the quantity Q2 in this equation, remember Q2 is the uh, optimal quantity of form number two, which we already solved. And it is equal to 60 minus Q1 divided by two. So now the profit function of form number one becomes this. And if we simplify it, it becomes 90 Q1 minus Q1 squared divided by two minus 30 Q1. And how do we maximize this function now for form number two? We have to take, sorry, for form number one, how do we maximize it? We have to maximize it with respect to Q1. We have to take the derivative of it with respect to Q1 and we put it equal to zero. So we apply the first order condition. We take the derivative of it with respect to Q1, we put it equal to zero, we solve it, and we get that the quantity of form number one, the best quantity of form number one is equal to 60. So once we find the quantity of, uh, best quantity of form number one, now we can also solve for the best quantity of form number two. If we substitute Q1 here, we can find the value of Q2. So the value of Q2 will be equal to 30. So the best quantity, so the solution for this game is that form number one produces 60 units and form number two produces only 30 units. So this is subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So now we can substitute these uh, equilibrium quantities or subgame perfect Nash equilibrium quantities in the profit function and price function to find out how much is the profit of form number one and how much is the profit of form number two and what is the price in the market. So if we do that, we see that the profit of form number one is 1800 and the profit of form number two is 900 and the price in the market is equal to 60. So let me for comparison also solve this scheme uh, using the coordinate model so that you understand what is the difference between coordinate and Stackelberg uh, equilibrium. So we take the same function as we did for Stackelberg. This is the uh, price function and this is the, uh, you know, the dim quantity is Q1 plus Q2 and then the C is equal to 30. And then the profit is equal to uh, T total revenue minus total cost, same like before. And we have the profit function for form number one, and we have the profit function from form number two. But what we do in a coordinate model, we take the first order conditions for form number one and form number two simultaneously. Okay, remember in, uh, in Stackelberg model, model, we do one after the other. First, we solve the problem of form number two, and then we solve the problem of form number one. But here, we take the first order condition simultaneously for both forms. And then we solve these equations simultaneously, yeah, like we solve them together. If we do that, we get the Q1 is equal to 40, Q2 is equal to 40. The profit of form number one is 1600, profit of form number two is also 1600 and price in the market will be equal to 70. So the main difference between the second Stackelberg and the corner model is that in Stackelberg we solve the problem one after the other. So we solve the problem of form number two and then we go to the problem of form number one. But in, in case of coordinate model, we solve these two equations simultaneously. So now let us compare the final outcome uh, using the coordinate model and the Stackelberg model. 
so you see that the uh, in corner model the quantities are equal to each other both from produce the same amount and then they enjoy the same amount of profit but in stackelberg model you notice that from number 1 who moves first gets uh, produce higher quantity and from number 2 who moves second produces lower quantity and then the firm who moves first get the higher share of the profit in the market and from number 2 who moves second will get get lower profit so this also explains you that the firm who moves first will get the first mover advantage okay so it means the firm number 1 behaves aggressively and secure more profits by one and then what it is what is it achieved in other and cornered nash equilibrium okay so this is the comparison so let me give you a real world example of the dynamic games and uh, this is an example of walmart which is one of the very big chain of stores in the us in the north america and we are talking about the uh, you know energy saving bulb cfl bulbs in the market so in 2006 walmart committed itself to produce 1 million cfl bulbs you know cfl bulbs are energy efficient and they are good for the environment so they decided to produce 1 million uh, of these bulbs and then you know walmart claim that they are doing it because they are more socially responsible okay they 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 tell the news or the media that they are producing these many bulbs in order to be socially responsible but in a, in a study from by amer he showed that this commitment can be an attempt to raise profit so the walmart was actually saying that they are doing it for socially to become socially responsible but actually we can show that this is just to increase this commitment was just to increase their profit not being socially responsible so let me explain this game with the help of a tree chart and we have walmart who moves first and they can commit to the output target to become socially responsible or they can decide not to commit uh, to the target and then the small firm has to take the action uh, after looking at the action of walmart they can also choose to commit to the you know producing these bulbs or they can also decide not to commit so if you know small firms decides to commit then the payoff for the walmart will be 90 and the payoff for the small firm will be equal to 40 on the other hand if the uh, you know the small firm do not commit and the uh, walmart is committing then walmart will be getting a very high profit whereas the small firm get lower profit on the other hand if the walmart decides to not commit with the target then again the small firm has the option to commit or do not commit so if the small firms commit and the walmart do not commit then the payoff will be equal to 80 for walmart and for small firm it will be 60 and then on the other end if both of them do not commit then the walmart get 100 and the small firms get 50 and remember this is a dynamic game so we have to solve this game using backward induction method and we solve this game backward so we first solve the problem of small form whether he choose commit or do not commit here and commit and do not commit here so let us solve the problem of small form so if we look at this part this sub game so what do you see what is best 45 or 40 of course 40 is better so uh, on this side of the game small firm will commit and if you look at the other sub game here so we again have to decide if 60 is bigger than 50 yes so it means it is also the best action for firm number 2 is to commit here so now we have decided the best actions for firm number 2 or small firm and now we go back to the walmart okay so the walmart is now have to choose between 
committing to the target and getting a payoff is equal to or profit is equal to 90 or if we do not commit then the payoff will be equal to 80. So we have to compare this 90 with 80. So of course this 90 is bigger than 80. So the wall mark will choose to commit to the output target. So now here you can see that Walmart is committing to the output target not because of being, being socially responsible but because it gives them higher payoff. If they do not commit, they get a lower payoff. If they commit, they get higher payoff. But you know this game is like a prisoner's dilemma. For example, if both of, form, both of these forms uh, cooperate with each other and they, they, and they do not go into the competition of producing energy saving bulbs, then they can say do not commit, do not commit. And what will be the payoff? The payoff will be equal to 100 to the Walmart and 50 to the small form, which is higher than this sub game perfect hash equilibrium. So this games look like uh, a prisoner's dilemma. If they play the game, they get lower payoff. But if they cooperate with each other, they can get higher PO. Okay. okay, and thank you very much for listening the video.